Matt, the, just the first half turnovers, and yeah. is that where the game just kind of got away from yeah, you? Yeah, no question. That and the free throws, and then those late turnovers. You know, we actually did a pretty good job in the second half of not turning it over until until the end. You know, we had three you know costly turnovers there at the end where we needed to get you know a crack at it. But we really talked about how they pressured and got into you last year here. We had ten turnovers right. the first half here last year. Then we came back and actually took the lead in the game, and then they made that shot at the end. But we just said, like, you know, we can't repeat that. You know, let somebody beat you a different way. Like, you know, keep giving yourselves a chance and take care of the basketball. And so when you have 11 turnovers in the first half and the game before, you had seven for the whole game, you know. Um, you know, it just hurts you. But, you know, our guys were resilient. They, they battled back, but, you know, not good enough. Um, you know, not making our free throws, turning the basketball over. Yeah, rebound somebody by 16. And you got somebody who gets 33 and 18, she win the game. You know, that, that, that should have been ours. But, you know, give them credit. They made more plays than we did down the stretch. Matt, uh, on the topic of those turnovers, is there anything particular you can attribute those to in the common thread? Yeah, not concentrating and not being tough, if you're generally speaking. I can go through all 11 if you want me to watch the film. Like, when you watch film with guys, it's all, you know, you got an offensive foul in the post on one of them. Like, you got a careless pass on another one. You know, their activity was good. So a lot of times, you guys always ask questions. I can only give it from my perspective. So to me, it's Purdue, right? But it could have been great defense by Indiana. You know, it's just, but each possession is different. When you talk about, you talk about missed free throws, you're talking about a free throw. It's the same thing all the way through, right? And the, each free throw is the same, 15 feet, no one's guarding it, all right? But turnovers are different. Some could be travel, some could be double dribbles, you know. But the pick sixes kill you. And that just they just kept getting in transition. And it happened last year. Trace got in foul trouble last year in the first half. And we just they just kept playing in transition. So not to say that they can't play in the half court because they really shot the ball well in the first half. You would just prefer someone to go against a set defense than instead of a continuous three on two or a two on one or a four on two, any type of a primary break. Why do you think Braden had such a tough time? Just concentration. You know, obviously a good player, made a lot of you know, made a lot of good reads, did a lot of good things. Um, but you know he only had what um, one turnover, six points, six assists, one turnover, three steals. But you know he just didn't go and get going shooting the basketball. You know he's our best free throw shooter. And he went two for four. So, um, but he's a good player. We're gonna keep him. <laughs> oh Matt, talk about Trace. You recruited Trace. You've seen him kind yeah. of grow. Trace is fabulous. Just a great person. You know, great player. Um, you know, we were on him early and. Put a lot of time into him, and obviously he, he chose to come here, and that's you know, that, that's his choice. But he's he's fabulous, man. He's added more pieces to his game. His decision making when he first started, when you doubled him, was just okay, and now he's got more. He's really good. But tonight he was physical, like you know when he made moves and he did stuff. Like he was, our guys were bouncing off of him. I mean, it was impressive. Like he made a couple spin moves and you know the dunks, and he's got a bright future. There's there, there's there's some really really intelligent. NBA people out there that understand that. So you can look at those mock drafts or whatever, but he's going to spend a long time in the NBA. He's fabulous. And he's a super, super person. He, uh, when Caleb Swanigan passed away, he reached out to me and sent me a text. And, you know, it just kind of shows you, you know, what's inside of him. Now, the, the turnovers in the first half obviously were huge, but you had three one possession games and turned the ball over, uh, you know, down one, down two, and down three in the final four minutes. No doubt. How big of backbreakers were those that, you yeah. know, if you, hit, if you score there, maybe it's a completely different outcome. Yeah, no question. Because if you can flip that a little bit and tie it or take the lead, it's just a different feeling. You know, you're up 15. I think the most they were up in the first half was 16. I thought it was a little bit more. And so, like, now it's it's really hard to overcome that when you, you kind of look and the air kind of goes out of you and things get quiet in your own arena because now – you know, you're going to let that lead get away, which happens a lot in basketball, right? And so that was a crucial time. And I feel for our guys, you know, just a couple careless plays that we like to have back. But one of the plays in the tournament was my fault. Like, I should have got a timeout. I just kept thinking, Zach, we had him a couple times, and their pressure took it away, and I should have got one. And so that was – so out of those three turnovers, I, I got to take one of those. What changed in the second half early to cut the lead? Yeah, well, when it first started, like, we were scoring, but they were scoring, too. And then we made a little bit of a surge right before that, that timeout where we cut it 
from 15 to 9, and then when it went from 16 to 12, it stayed at 9. And that's what we really talked about in there. Like, you know, hey, you got to chip it away. You can't, you know, you can't trade baskets with them at this point. Like, you know, you got to be able to get stops and, and do some different things. And, um, you know, we were going to establish Zach. We were going to go to him. Like, we didn't think they had an answer, you know, for him. We wanted to go right to him. They were just fouling him and grabbing him and holding him. Um, and it's hard. It's hard for those officials. They can't call every single one of them. I like to tell them that I think they can. Um, and, and, and so, like, that, that's all we were, we were trying to do. But with that, when they overdo things and they double, you got to make some shots. You know, Brandon Newman made one. David Jenkins made a couple. Um, Caleb made one in the first half. Mace made one there in the second half. But we're a better shooting team than 6 for 18. You know, we're a better shooting team than 10 for 17. They didn't guard us at the free throw line, right? They might have guarded our threes, but they didn't guard our, they didn't, they can't guard people at the free throw line. Um, so just, you know, one of those games. But when you get those kind of opportunities and you got a guy that's, you know, going to the well like that and they can't stop him, you know, that's the great balance when you can make those threes along with what he was doing. What's the most important thing they can take from this game they should learn? The Purdue game? Yeah. yeah. Just concentrate. Be, you know, be tougher mentally in that first half and take care of the basketball. I told our guys afterwards, like, nobody tries to miss a three. Nobody tries to miss a free throw. Like, I've never been upset. I've been upset with a bad shot. But, like, hey, you got to concentrate and do your job defensively, and you got to take care of the basketball. I thought our concentration wasn't very good. And like I said earlier, you know, you got to give Indiana a lot of credit for that because they took us out of our rhythm. How much did the two early fouls on Ethan disrupt what you wanted to do defensively out on the perimeter? Um, I don't think a whole lot. I don't think a whole lot. I thought David Jenkins gave us some good minutes. I thought Brandon Newman did some good things when they subbed in. Yeah, I don't think that was that much of a deal. He was scoring on anybody. I mean, I, when it's one of those things where you, like, I thought Indiana shot well from the perimeter. It just seemed in my mind, like, God dang, like, how many threes are going to hit? He hit four threes. It's not very many. <laughs> then, like, but the Hood Shafino, like, making those pull ups, you know, and, you know, and then, then you look at him, he's eight for 15. Like, in my mind, like, he was like 13 for 15. Like, but he, you know, he's a good player, and uh, he, he's got a bright future. One right, more. Up Fifty points in the first half. Yeah. Uh, what's that reflect? Yeah, just a lot of what I, you know, said. Like, you got to give Indiana credit for it, but just when you're giving up fifty points, they were playing in transition so much, and like now make them score against us in the half court. Even though Trace was kind of finding his way and then doing some things, keep keep making them do that. So now when you let them have some offensive rebounds, now you let them have some transition. Now they're having success shooting the basketball. You know, they got a little bit of everything. And um, we haven't allowed 71 points all year. You know, so to give up 50 in one half. And we've been in some hornet's nest. Like we've been on the road and played at some real tough places, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State. In my mind, I've always felt this way. This is the toughest place, even though we've had some success. Uh, but yeah, just the combination of all that. And then we did some good things and then just miss free throws. So like now all of a sudden like you're in a stretch where you're like one for five, one for six, with one of them being a front end. So you don't feel like you're doing good things when you miss your free throws too. A lot of that just kind of compounded itself. Coach, you're going to see him again in three weeks. What, what are you going to take from this game when you prepare for that game? Um, not to turn the ball over, you know, more than anything. And that's what we took last year from it. We, we were hoping to get it physical in practice and, and really foul each other in practice and just make it impossible, whatever, but that didn't work. Um, I think it's the combination of their approach and also the environment that sometimes, you know, guys get emotionally drunk and lose it. Um, but you got to give them credit, man. They, they do a good job of pressuring, and it's hard. Who cares? Like, who, who cares what's going on out there? You know what I mean? Handle it. Handle it. Like, don't like don't worry about it. It's just a basketball game. If it gets physical, it gets physical. you got to be able to play. If they start calling things close, you got to adjust and be able to play. That's just part of it. We didn't do that. It took us until halftime to recalibrate and, and kind of get ourselves in a position where now we can focus. But then when, when we go to Zach and we make some perimeter shots, you know, it, it, the defense gets better sometimes when the offense, you know, flows. And you can't do that. You know what I mean? You can always rebound. You can always take care of the ball. You can always make your free throws. Like th those things there. And so we'll go back and watch the tape. And one of the dumbest things in the world is getting interviewed after a game before you watch tape. I know you guys are like, hey, you, well, you said this. You're like, I'm 60 feet away from half the game. You know, what would you like me to do? You know what I mean? But then I watch the game, and I feel like, man, I argued this call, and I argued this call. Man, I'm not even close. You know, and so you, you, you have a lot of that. So you got to be honest with yourself.
and things like that. That's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to be honest with myself so I can get better, so we can get better. Thank you.